In this video, I will lead you in choosing the right components for building an affordable gaming computer. With this setup, you can play all recent titles at a minimum of 1080p resolution with image details set at medium to high quality and also able to run at ultra details in less demanding games. Other than gaming, this system is also well suited for day-to-day -day tasks like heavy web browsing, playing 4K videos, multimedia encoding jobs, running virtual machines without any series lagging. Component selection will be based on the following criteria in my mind. Number one is, of course, at the minimal cost, it should provide solid performance without spending too much of money. Number two, the processor must be based on the latest architecture to prevent socket compatibility issue while upgrading after some time and provide superior performance in all type of workloads than other CPU models falling at the same price bracket. And I don't choose a processor that has a weak single thread performance. The motherboard should have adequate connectivity options such as ample number of USB ports at the back panel, quantity of SATA 3 ports, additional system fan connectors and I also recommend motherboards that use all solid capacitor design for more endurance. A reliable and good performing hard disk for storage. A graphic card capable of playing all the latest games at 1080p resolution with good amount of details enabled. Should provide fluid frame rates in demanding games at least in medium quality settings. A power supply with sufficient wattage to handle the current components and also supply power to moderately power hungry CPU GPU upgrades in the future. Should support 80 plus energy efficiency rating for power saving. And finally a solid well ventilated case with cable management provisions for achieving better airflow and neat appearance inside. Now let's jump into the component selection part. The processor which I'm going to recommend for our build is obviously the 6th generation i3-6100. It provides best-in-class performance in most tasks thrown at its face and is far more efficient and doesn't require any fancy cooling unlike AMD CPUs which consumes 95W under heavy load and require third-party coolers due to more noise produced from stock fan setup. This CPU is based on the Intel's latest Skylake architecture and it offers impressive performance gains from previous generation i3 models. With this processor, you will step into the new memory standard called DDR4. It has a high base clock speed of 3.7 GHz, 3 MB cache memory, built-in HD 530 graphics which is capable of handling 4K videos and even gaming in minimal resolution at lowest details enabled. You may also encounter another i3 model called 6098P that has a weak HD 510 graphics instead of HD 530 used in 6100. There is also 100MHz deficiency in clock speed. I suggest you to stick with 6100. The close competitor for our recommended CPU is the AMD FX 6300. Even though it has more cores with higher cache memory, Intel's superior architecture beats this AMD processor in most scenarios. I don't recommend you to go with AMD path right now at the time of creating this video, since the entire FX series is going to be replaced with the AMD's upcoming Zen architecture in few months. And that will use a different socket and you end up losing the upgrade path if you select this already 5 year old platform. You have the freedom of picking any Intel H110 chipset based motherboard from any form factor that is ATX or micro ATX depending on your connectivity requirements. ITX motherboard is not possible in this budget since motherboard cost will be too high to include in our build. There are some limitations with H110 chipset based motherboards such as no overclocking support for both the CPU and memory has only 4 SATA 3 ports, 2 memory slots and less number of USB 3 ports. Other than these limitations, this chipset will not remain a huge bottleneck for gaming. 
Make sure the motherboard model you are selecting has all the necessary expansion slots and ports for connecting your existing components as well as future upgrades. Here are some of my recommendations for the motherboard. The first one is H110M-K from ASUS and this model is rich in connectivity options. The next one ASUS H110M-D model contains LPT and serial interface which are pretty rare these days and you can retain those ancient devices by selecting this variant. This one from Gigabyte is bit interesting model for processing the new standard USB 3.1 in the form of both Type-A and Type-C connector ships. I found this cheapest model from ECS brand while hunting for budget motherboards and surprisingly it has all solid capacitor design for such a low price. If you're lucky you may also get the H150 chipset based motherboard from ASRock almost at similar price of 110 models from other brands. Though 4 GB of RAM can be a good beginning for an inexpensive gaming machine. I don't like wasting a memory slot by just filling with 4GB since 110 chipset based motherboards are restricted with two memory slots. So 8GB remains ideal for our PC and you rarely upgrade from that capacity unless you need to run specific applications. For this I select 8GB Kingston Fury model or the low profile Corsair Vengeance series. You may also go with 2100 MHz clock speed which is the maximum frequency these chipsets will support. For odd disk selection, I am going to suggest you two different tracks. First one, a solid state and mechanical drive combo for that crazy boot speed and loading times as well as ample amount of storage for other regular content. Though cheap price of 120 GB SSD may sound tempting, I am going to force you to buy the higher version in order to achieve full benefit of using a solid state drive. If you install 120 GB then that capacity is not going to help you in the long run as latest games consumes huge amount of space after installation and fills that storage in no matter of time. Still if you can't afford higher capacities then get the 120 GB variant configure it as a boot drive with basic applications installed and put those huge size games in secondary mechanical drive. Either way I encourage you to install SSD for improving the overall system speed. For solid state drive I will recommend the PNY CS1311 model that offers superior sequential and 4K performance for less money. The second option will be installing a standalone mechanical hard drive if you plan to buy the highest capacity SSD possible after some time. For both setups, I recommend this mechanical drive from Toshiba. It rotates at 7200 RPM with 32 MB cache memory and it is very much reliable with good read rate speeds and I am using this model in many of my client machines for a long time without any single failure. It is backed with 2 year limited warranty and better tolerance rating for that extra protection. I don't encourage you to buy the slower 5400 RPM models termed as AV series which definitely drags the overall system speed and frame rates will also be affected in gameplay. Now we are going to select the core component for this budget PC. Yes of course the graphic card. I recommend this NVIDIA Sound50 TI model for beginners with limited amount of cash in hand and still wish to step into 1080p gaming. It can play all the latest games on medium to high settings at Full HD resolution. I managed to run GTA 5 with most details in high settings and maintained 30 FPS in all places. This Maxwell architecture based Sound50 TI is much more energy efficient and most brands based on this chipset doesn't require an additional power connector. For this I select ASUS Sound50 TI PH variant 
and this one operates without any additional power connector. I don't recommend you to buy a 4GB Sound 50Ti variant and with that extra money I strongly advise you to grab the latest budget king chipset the NVIDIA GTX 950. This chip eventually replaces the generation old Sound 50Ti models. It provides great frame rates with plenty of visuals enabled in all recent games and it is a perfect budget solution for 1080p gaming. If you wish to go in the ATI path, then get this newly launched RX 460 which is better than Sound 50 Ti model and deliver similar performance of GTX 950. A good quality power supply with 450 or 500 watts will be sufficient to handle the components that we have selected. And if you have plans for power hungry CPU GPU upgrades in the future, then get at least a 500 watts power supply. Here are some more quality models from Antec brand. And always be specific about the amp rating for 12 volt line. I suggest a minimum of 30 amps combined on 12 volt rails. Moving to cabinet selection, I request you to choose the case wisely without compromising on quality and features by stretching your budget as much as possible. It remains a solid foundation for accommodating our present hardware and future upgrades. We often change CPU, GPU or even the motherboard to increase speed and adapt to latest architecture but we neglect the important part, the cabinet. I believe putting money on a computer case as an investment since we mostly don't change the cabinet and retain it in every upgrade we do for other components. Look out for these features while designing a case model. A massive cutout behind the motherboard tray for easy access to CPU cooler upgrade without the need of removing motherboard. Have more access points for routing wires for better cable management. I opt for cases with at least one USB 3.0 port on the front panel. Space for 200 inch drives due to increased SSD usage nowadays. Place the mechanical hard drive towards the front intake fan for effective cooling and room for 120mm size fans to achieve silent operation. The outcome of having such features will result in a neat looking, easy to upgrade and well ventilated PC in your room. You have the freedom of picking any cabinet size based on your motherboard form factor. I have chosen Cooler Monster K380. It is little expensive but meets all the requirements I needed for a good case. Now I will show you some of the models that interested me. You can even explore more models based on availability near your region. These are the results obtained from various benchmark sorts. 
and NVIDIA 750 Ti was used in these tests. This was the final build with components selected from my recommended list.